Hello everyone, here's Faye from Faye's Parallel Stories. I've always felt like autumn is much more of a new beginning than spring is, so I think autumn cleaning should be just as much as a thing as spring cleaning. And inspired by Book Riot posting the first of their five fall into fall challenges, I guess, um, I've decided to cull my Goodreads TBR shelf. Mine isn't quite as large as some other people's, and I have seen other videos that were um, justifiably quite long, but um, we'll just see what I can do. Hopefully maybe whittle it down to half and feel like everything that is on my Goodreads TV is something I truly want to read. So here we go. So I feel like we should start off on my currently reading shelf, which has seven books on it, which is absolutely stupid because I can only really read two or three books max in parallel. So uh, looking at the date here, I added A Thinking Fast and Slow by Dan Daniel Kahneman on the 21st of August 2016, more than two years ago. Safe to say I'm not truly reading that anymore. Yeah, I'm just going to delete it. I liked Thinking Fast and Slow in theory. The things he talks about are really interesting. I did learn some of the concepts in my undergrad in psychology. Um, but the book itself is super dense, um, moves quite slowly, and I just lost interest. So, um, yeah, then I also have 50 Great Short Stories. This is just a collection of 50 Great sh Short Stories, no shit. Um, so I am also approaching two years of apparently reading this book. I'm not reading it. Um, I am learning that I only really like short stories when they are put together under a theme or by the same author, something a bit more succinct um, in explaining why they've been collected. 50 short stories just over the span of um, decades didn't do it for me. How to Develop Emotional Health is a book that I have surely not been reading for that long. No, that's just the day I added it. Um, I'm really, really hating this book. It's a really small book, but I do want to finish it because I have strong feelings about it. I started a room with a view which um, I think I'm gonna take off because I don't remember the beginning of that anyway, so if I were to ever read A Room With A View again, I would have to start over. Um, My Dog Tulip, I started during a readathon maybe a month or two ago, and also don't think is very good, but it's slim, so going against my principles of not reading books that I don't like, um, I think I still will finish it. Middlesex is like truthfully the book I am currently reading and I Am I Am I Am by Maggie O'Farrell is also a book that I will continue reading. It's um, short chapters that you can read um, irrespective of each other so I feel fine taking my time reading that. So they're currently reading four books and opposed to seven is more realistic. On my want to read shelf I currently have 88 books now. I use this mainly for going into bookshops and libraries um, when I'm not quite sure what I want to um, buy or if I want to like, look up what they have. Um, so I want to remove any books that I may already own um, just so that I don't risk buying the same book twice um, and maybe also just get books off of this that I'm not interested in anymore. So I'm going to maybe sort this by date added um, because the things that are further back I think are books that I am not that interested in anymore potentially. Lying by by Sam Harris. See that's a non-fiction about lying which that just doesn't seem very chipper. I don't want to read that right now. Um, the Bell Deal by Sylvia Plath. I'm interested enough because I feel like that's something everyone should read. I'll keep that on for now. Bastard Out of Carolina and The Big Sleep, potentially, were books that Mercedes over at Mercy's Bookish Musings raved about at some point, probably more than three years ago, and um, her love for books is quite contagious, but um, in those three years I have obviously not felt the need to pick, pick, pick these books up. So they are going to go. Not so perfect stories. I'm actually not sure what this was. I'm, I'm being, being hard. 
is going. I want to get down from my 88 to um, 40, 40 tops maybe. Um, Fool on the Hill by Matt Ruff. I've read something else by Matt Ruff and quite liked it. Fool on the Hill, I'm not sure whether I have already read perhaps because Fool on the Hill, if this is about... Uh, <laughs> Um, nope, definitely have not read this. I will keep that on there for now. The Book of Strange New Things. Ha. Now, so I've tried to put this on like a DNF shelf. Oh, background sounds my dog drinking, sorry. Um, I've put this on my DNF shelf because I read like halfway through this book and really didn't like it. But I just want to get... I don't want to continue reading this. I never will. I DNF'd it. I also don't need that to show up. So that's gone. East of Eden. I do want to read, but um, I own, or more, or rather my boyfriend owns it, so um, I don't want to risk buying that again. Actually, if this is going to take long, I'm going to do batch edit so I can delete a few more things at the same time. What are you doing? <sighs> so much background noise. Um, the bluest eye. I have that, or I had that from my mum's. I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna take my dog's bone away. Ugh. Sorry, that's too loud and too annoying. Um, the bluest eye. I am not gonna get because I had that for uh, a year or so from my mum and didn't end up reading it. So I'm not gonna read that. Everything is Illuminated is another one that I might stumble upon but won't purposefully get, I don't think. Um, because I think I tried it from the library and didn't exactly vibe with it too much. What else do we have? Raven Girl by Audrey Niffenegger. Still kind of intrigued by that. She's the author of The Time Traveller's Wife, which I guiltily loved and cried over loads. So I want to keep that on. Revolutionary Road, which was torn turned into an amazing movie with Leonardo DiCaprio I might still read in the future. Same goes for A Tale for the Time Being. Does that also go for A Tale for the Time Being? Yes it does. The Secret History by Donna Tartt. Everyone always raves about this but I'm gonna take it off my TBR because I've not been thinking of it. The House of the Scorpion got like a 4.1 I think really good for a sort of why a I think it's a sort of fantasy trilogy um but I am I have others I could read if that is a sort of genre or style of book that tempts me in the future um Girls Will Be Girls apparently is a really really good read about um gender roles and how these should be shaken up a little bit so I I think I am still interested in that. Same goes for the fair fight. Does that go for the fair fight? I feel like the fair fight and the woman warrior, these two, are... Maybe I stumbled upon them sort of around a similar time they're both sort of feminist fiction, um, which I think I feel more like now than I have for a while. So I'll keep those on there for now. Speak by Louisa Hall. I'm blanking on what that is. Huh. This actually sounds like more of a sort of sci-fi novel about the development of of language maybe? Okay, I had that I had that memorized incorrectly. I thought that was a sort of again sort of angsty teeny novel, but I don't think it is so I oh, know, I will actually keep it on there for that reason. The Lies of Loch Lamora is a book that a good friend of mine recommended to me, but I think it's too... Hmm, I just don't feel like it because I feel like it's fantasy centred around this band of thieves, which is not something I'm into. Sorry. Child Thief. Um, I also got that off some YouTube video, I think. Um, but this, I think, is also too much YA and too much in the genre of books that I could, um, I have others that I could potentially pick up. The Blue Girl? 
Leah. Ah, ah, ah. A mother bakes things into. Uh, feelings into Kate, girl can taste it. I feel like that's super similar to a different book I read. Uh, something like the particular, yeah, the particular sadness of lemon cake, which sounds really, really similar. But sometimes I like a good sort of surreal um, plot like that, so I'll keep that on there. Golden Boy, I think, is about a transgender kid or. Sounds really awful. Or is it about a kid coming out? I'm not sure, but I have heard that it's good and a 4.8 is also a really good rating. Under the Visible Life. What's this? I am... Sorry to say that I'm not interested in Under the Visible Life anymore, even though the story doesn't sound bad. I just... I'm losing sight of what I truly want to read by having so many in here. Okay, so the, the Museum of You is, I think, a sort of tear story about a father and his daughter, and they they lose the mum, she dies. Um, that's supposed to be quite heartwarming. I'll keep that on there. If nobody speaks of remarkable things, do I have that? I think I might. I have that. So that's going. I'm just going to take off. Wittgenstein's mistress, I'm going to take off. Like, these are just things that are, like, are not ringing bells anymore, so I'm, I'm taking them off. Rendezvous with Rama was recommended to me after I specifically asked for book recommendations, after I did my um, um, uh, book review on a sci-fi novel, which um, that sounded really interesting, so I'm keeping that on there. The Road Home by Rose Tremaine, do I have that? I don't think I do, but it's also not ringing any bells. It's gone, girl. It's gone. A um, Murakami book, non-fiction, where he talks to, I think, an orchestra director or composer. Mm, I'm not sure, but they talk about music. I do really like classical music, and I tend to like Murakami's writing, so that's going to stay on there. The Love That Split the World YA love story. No, not staying on there. Every Heart a Doorway. Not sure. I feel like a lot of people have read this and like this, so I might give that a chance though. Jonathan Strange and Mr. Noel. This, I think, is something like... How many pages does this have? Six, seven hundred pages? Something like that. I'm not sure. I'm not going to bother. I don't want to read it. Dreadnought, I thought, is... I don't remember why I stumbled over this, but I think this is a... Like, why a um, superhero story? But it's a cool one. It's a teenager who, I believe... Um, is uh, like a transgender kid that wakes up in the right gender um, when she turns into this superhero, something like that. I know, it sounds cool. A separation I added because of the cool cover. I remember the cover striking my interest is Bear Town. Definitely keeping that on there, even though, even if I took it down from the list, I probably wouldn't um, forget it because I do really want to... Um, read it just haven't gotten to read it and I darken some kind of YA fantasy trilogy there are so many history of wolves I've had in my hands in the bookshop so many times now and never ended up buying it so either one of these days I will hold it in my hands and I will buy it um or it's not meant to be so it can go off this list the return of the soldier Mm, no, just no. The Flame Alphabet, um, the, uh, Books and Lala had a video talking about her lowest Goodreads um, rated books and The Flame Alphabet I believe was on it and she thought it was really dodgy and yeah, it has a 2.89 rating which is pretty low. Um, I'm still tempted though. I don't know whether I should just believe all these people and just not waste my time but Oh, maybe that has to go in a second round. I'm still tempted. The Killer Inside Me, also, I believe, a either a non-fiction or just told from the point of view from the killer, like a crime novel, which I just sound, think, well, think, thought, sound cool in the bookshop. Jeez, words. A Line Made by Walking by, uh, that was also recommended. Ah, uh, but it's a young artist searching for meaning, and I'd have little patience for that. Sorry. The Child Finder, um, 
yeah, I think Renee Denfeld also wrote The Enchanted, something like that, which I loved. So I am very interested in reading that one. That can stay. And Hero, I believe, is like another heartwarming um, sort of younger reader um, book, which I'm just not going to get to if I'm being honest. The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock. I have heard many a good thing about this, um, but again, it is one of those that I've always turned down in the bookshop so I, I think that's also going to happen in the future. I'm taking it off the list for now at least. Seeing Red, oh no I thought I think that was actually quite an, an intriguing one if I remember correctly. So Seeing Red by Lena Meruane, I, ooh, I do not know how to pronounce that, uh, I think it sounds really promising about a woman who loses her eyesight or it's um, significantly impaired in any case and she gets really really dependent on other people I, I think that sounds quite chilling girls burn brighter also want to read that let me lie now this is a crime story by an author who I read a different book by and that was really great so I'm taking this off not because I'm not interested in the author um, but just because crime stories and thrillers I will just generally peruse what a bookshop has anyway. I very rarely look for one in particular um, because there's really, I, I don't know, I, there are a lot of great crime novels and chances are you're going to find a crime, a thriller novel in a bookstore um, that you want to read if that's what you are into. Children of Blood and Bone got a lot of buzz when it came out maybe a few months ago, um, but I feel like the buzz has died down and I'm kind of happy I held off because I've first I heard a whole wave of people loving it and now not so much clear a transparent novel zero memory of what this was about I'm taking that off the bookshop of yesterdays I have a true true soft spot for books about bookshops and um, so that can stay same goes for uh, Torch Against the Night and Muse of Nightmares, both the second part in um, series where I read the first part and loved the first part of both, so that can say. Son of a Trickster is a fantasy novel by Eden Robinson, a Canadian author, um, who I, I stumbled across this book when I was looking for books to read during the Canadian Readathon and I couldn't find it anywhere in Germany, so... Um, I'm still on the hunt. Rust and Stardust, I very much still want to read a book um, that is about the case that apparently inspired the Lolita novel, Vengeful. Yes, I did read the, the first part by uh, in this series by Victoria Schwab, I loved that. Um, a non-fiction about what the, what the meaning of home means to you, loving the place you live, I do want to read that. Dear Mrs. Bird. I'm gonna take that off because I um, just ah, she's, I think it sounds like a really really cute book but if I don't just stumble across this at a bookshop then I'm just not gonna get it. Tell Me How It Ends is a non-fiction story written by a woman who deals with um, the families that are being separated at the border to Mexico um, and the horrific experiences she makes talking to those children. Uh, I think that sounds really interesting. Um, uh, One of Us, the story of Ander, Anders Breivik and the massacre in Norway. Horrible thing that happened in Norway. This, I guess, risks being a very sensationalist non-fiction, non-fictional account of it. Even so, I am interested in it. The Lost Flowers of Alice Hart. I don't remember Grace and Fury just looks like a fantasy random novel that I'm not going to read. Small Animals, yeah, mm, non-fictional book <laughs> about the fear of being a parent. I find that actually quite interesting, um, especially, you know, in the phase of a life that I am currently in, more and more people around me are thinking of having children, so I am interested in that. And Stardust by Neil Gaiman would be, I think, only the second book that I would read by Neil Gaiman, but it comes with warmest recommendations by a friend, so I owe her to keep that on there. So I have 58 books 
trying to whittle it down to 40 now, I guess. Uh, so, with a stricter comb, I am taking off the bell jar because I've heard it's a cult book, but actually not that great. Um, I'm also taking all the broken things off because I do not remember what that's about. I'm talking, taking off Geek Love because I have had this book in my hand several times and have not been interested enough to actually pick it up. Raven Girl, I'm still interested in Revolutionary Road, I'm still interested in Tale for the Time Being. I'm not sure. I have a different Ruth Ozeki book on my bookshelves, so I might just read that and see how that goes before I decide to read more. Um, I'm going to take the Blue Girl off because I feel like it's been done before. First Bite, How We Learn. I have this book, I think, actually, by B. Wilson, about how our eating habits are formed over the course of our life, um, currently from my mum's. One Bird's Choice, I can't seem to get anywhere. Amazon doesn't seem to have it anymore, or at least not in a um, sort of affordable version, but I think I might keep it on there and continue thinking about that. The Happy Marriage is not something I'm interested in enough. Once Were Warriors and Who who Fears Death have both been recommended to me to people from my book club and um, they tend to recommend really interesting things. Um, Sex and the Citadel is... I feel like there are better books I could read about um, sort of the Muslim faith or the culture in Arab countries. It doesn't have to be have something that makes it sort of sex cells on the cover. There's plenty of good books to read. I guess I can take the flame alphabet off. So many people have said it's not good. Alex approximately is, um, go back to bed editing, definitely one that I'm not going to read a YA love story. There's loads of gathered the daughters I am interested in. The Obsession by Norma Roberts. I'm not expecting to be a great book, but, um, I've expected it to be a great book, <laughs> so I want to read it. Tender Morsels, um, I've looked up and I I hate the cover. That's the only reason I'm going to take it off. I still really want to read these, yes, yes, yes. Oh, these are the newest things I've added, which of course I am still interested in. Although shockingly I have no clue what She Would Be King is about. Um, Okay, so this is plotted as magical realism, talking about Liberia's history. This does just sound excellent, so that's staying on there. So I'm afraid I cannot cut it down to less than 49 right now, but that's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm all right with that. That's um, still plenty plenty less. <laughs> Grammar's gone. So I've gone from 88 to be read books to 49. Uh, quick math, 39 books less. Not too shabby, I think. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with that. If I deleted any books that are you now making you upset and you think I should read, um, convince me to put them back on. That's fine. Um, equally, if there are some books that you think um, I still have on this list, but I should actually really, really get to. I do think it is really nice to every now and then go through these books and just remember why you put them on there in the first place. Um, and also make space for new things. Otherwise, these books that I keep on adding to the list are just going down and down and I'm forgetting about them. Um, so this was actually pretty fun. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, let me know what I should be reading next and I'll talk to you very soon. Bye.